Hey guys, Tony Demore from Demore Engineering. Welcome to video three. I'm going to uh, finish up last video's homework problem, and then we're going to talk about some a little bit more DC power stuff uh, related to specifically to uh, car audio, since most of us watching this are probably car audio people. And um, we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, so here's the homework problem. We got a 12 volt battery, and has connected to it two resistances in series. We know when we put resistors in series that the resistance adds up. So 8 ohms and 4 ohms, so the resistance of this whole thing will be 12 ohms. Well, we know that the current equals voltage over impedance. We have 12 volts and 12 ohms, so that's going to equal 1 amp. So we have 1 amp of current flowing this way. Now the homework question was how much power is being dissipated in these resistors. And the formula for that is, well there's a few you could use, but we'll use, um, we'll use current squared times the resistance. So for this one, it will be one amp squared times eight ohms, or one times eight. Eight, so this one has eight watts of heat being dissipated, and this, if you did the same thing here, you would end up with 4 watts. So the total dissipation of the circuit is 12 watts. And we can see that makes sense here because watts is also amps times volts. And the total system here has 12 volts and 1 amp. So that would say that the battery is putting out 12 watts of power. And it's all being absorbed here. So if you got 8 watts and 4 watts and 1 amp, then congratulations. Good job. Okay, so to go any further with these discussions of power and that, we need, we need to understand uh, another term. We need to understand efficiency. So we've, we've talked about volts, we've talked about amps, we've talked about resistance, which is ohms, All right, volts. So we've discussed these things, we've talked about series, parallel resistors. All right, another thing that we can talk about um, we've talked about power, which is watts. But another thing we can talk about is efficiency. So the efficiency of something is how much power is going in versus how much power is coming out of it. So in a perfect world, everything would be 100% efficient, and healthcare would be cheap, but uh, that's not happening. So here's our amplifier. And let's say that uh, here's our connections to our car. Here's the ground, here's our battery, 12 volt battery, and this goes out to our subwoofer. So if I measured this, I played a, a sine wave and I, you know, burped this and I measured it and I saw that there were 12 volts here and I put a clamp on this DC cable here, which is all those clamps are good for, by the way, and I read uh, 200 amps of current, then watts equals volts times amps, okay? And DC, that's true. This is the DC side of this amplifier. This is AC over here, which we're gonna talk about later. So the DC input to the amplifier is 12 volts times 200 amps, or 2400 watts. So there's 2400 watts of power going into that amplifier. So we know right then and there that no more than 2400 watts could ever come out of the amplifier because it doesn't make power. Nothing can make power. You can't create it or destroy it. You can only change it from one form to another. So, you know, if this thing made power, you could uh, you'd sell them, you know, to the power company and stuff. Of course that doesn't happen. And you see all these things all the time like, oh, free energy. And, uh, you know, the, this one thing the government doesn't want you to know about that's free energy and all that, well, no, okay? Um, so, here we go, 2400 watts in. So let's say we measure the output somehow, and we, we figure out that there's 1600 watts coming out of this amplifier. Well, our efficiency then would be, 1600 watts of output divided by 2400 watts of input and we do that calculation 
the terms watts cancel out. You divide these and you're going to end up with 66.7% efficiency. This is the typical efficiency for, uh, well, it's a little bit better than a Class A-B would be at full volume or at clipping, or right at clipping, and it's a little bit worse than a Class D might be at clipping. Usually, uh, Class A-Bs, I'll need to write it down, Class A-Bs you would see about 60%. And class D's you might see, if you're running them at one ohm, you might see 70, 75. These amplifier people like to uh, tell tall tales about their efficiency of their class D's. Oh, it's 90% efficient. What they mean when they say that is that the amplifier part of the amplifier is 90% efficient because within this amp there's two parts. There's the power supply and then there's the amplifier. So okay, this part of your amplifier is 90% efficient, congratulations, but this one over here is only 80% efficient, the power supply, so then the total efficiency of this amp is 80 times 90, or 72%, and this is the real number, so just don't be tricked by that. The best you're going to see out of a class D is probably 80, and that's probably not running it at 1 ohm. So. That's efficiency. All right, so that takes us to the homework problem for this installment. And here's what we have. We have a battery, 12.6 volt lead acid battery. It has some internal resistance to it of four milliohms. This is inside the battery between the actual cells and the output terminals. This is a pretty uh, you know, reasonable number for a, a decent lead acid battery that's pretty fresh. We have our piece of odd gauge copper here, 20 feet long, that's got 2 milliohms of resistance. We have the same amount of resistance on the ground return path back to the battery from the amplifier. We're assuming the amplifier is drawing 200 amps, and it's 70% efficient from input to output. So, the homework assignment is, A, what is the voltage at the battery terminals during this 200 amp load. Remember the 200 amps is coming out of the battery and then it's returning through the ground path. What is the voltage? If I took a DMM and put it right here on these battery terminals, what's that voltage going to read during this condition? B, what's the voltage going to be across the amplifier terminals during this time? Right here, here and here. Remember, there's losses here, there's losses there, there's losses here. So what are we going to see right here? And then C, if we, once we figure out all that and we know what the current is going in, then how much, is, uh, how much power is going into the amplifier? Input power to amp. And D, assuming 70% efficiency for this amplifier, then what is the output power? There you go. That's uh, this week's homework assignment. Should be a fun one, and uh, look forward to seeing your your comments and your results on it. And um, see you next time.